And I invite you to find a Bible and open it up to the Gospel according to Mark in that very first chapter. It is often that where we turn at this season of the year is to Mark, is to Matthew, or to Luke in that opening chapters. But here we find ourselves in Mark. And it too is a nativity. It too is the birth story, the birth of the Savior within us and through us. For it speaks of baptism, and it speaks of the coming of the Lord in your life into our world. So open your hearts and your minds and let us hear this word, a word of the Lord. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Yes. Well, here, John the baptizer, or in, 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 in Mark, we have that prophet Isaiah quoted again. We heard it earlier when we were lighting the Advent wreath, as Gary read for us from that place in Isaiah and the prophecy heard. You heard those words, right? The words that say, I will prepare your way. The voice crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord and make his path straight. A straight path for our Lord. That means that those, those hills and those valleys, they shall be brought down, they shall be raised up so that it is a level path. And any curve and twists and winds along the road will be made straight. So we have a nice direct road, a nice path to walk, a nice easy way to go. But then we heard Mary in the reflections there. In, in Luke, it, where it speaks of the way in which Joseph and Mary were on their way from Nazareth to Bethlehem, it took maybe like a week for them to journey all the way to Bethlehem. They had to go there for the census. And we know that Mary was in her latter term there of her pregnancy. So she was great with child. And yet she had to travel that distance, a long way to go in that place and in that time. Not a simple journey she had to make. The challenges that must have faced both of them. It doesn't say a whole lot in Luke. It actually just says, and they went, Mary and Joseph, from Nazareth to Bethlehem. It doesn't say a whole lot else. It doesn't really say anything else other than she went with Joseph on her way. And we wonder then, and we kind of want to fill in all of that place and wonder what that was that like. And so the reflection around the Advent wreath was, was what that must have been like for a woman in that time of a pregnancy to go on that kind of a journey. And the challenges that it must have been there, the awesome challenges that had to have been hers to overcome for both of them. No simple journey, right? Where did the straight path go? You know, Mary probably would have wondered, wait a minute, you know, it says there in Isaiah, and, and that's what everybody was, was there in their mind, and our scriptures are filled with that prophetic word that the valleys will be lifted up, that the mountains will be, that the, the, the way will be straight. Uh, we know that there was no paved road for Mary to Joseph to get in a car and go. They walked the whole way. Tradition says that it probably was that Mary rode on a donkey all the way there too. But that would have been extremely difficult in and of itself, even though she wouldn't have walked, just riding on that beast of burden. Difficult. Maybe she was wondering that. Why so hard? Why so difficult? God called this and made this to be so. 
the angels came and spoke. I'm carrying in my womb the Son of God. Why are not the highways made straight, lifted up, made flat, a level plain? Why so difficult? Why so many unknowns? But all we hear there in Luke is that they went from Nazareth to Bethlehem. And all of that arduous, challenging journey and the detail of it, who among us wouldn't be complaining along the way? We would be complaining about how the condition was and why we had to do such a thing. And that's Caesar anyway, and Mary raising her fist maybe about how he made them go for some ridiculous tax purpose of being counted. Maybe complaining to Joseph, you didn't plan well enough. You know, did you make reservations ahead in Bethlehem? No, you didn't. Well, what are we going to do? Back and forth with each other, you can only imagine what it may have been like because we can imagine what it is like in our own cars when we're traveling from here to there. We're never quite satisfied. We complain about things. We're never in that place where Mary seems to be, a place of blessedness, a place of peace and wellness, a place where she knows all will be well. How do you do that where all of that isn't in there about the nastiness of it? It's because even then, Mark, even then Luke, rather, and, and Matthew, when they speak of this, and the brevity of it is that they have the vision and the goal about where it's headed. When we hold that in our mind, where God is taking us, then all of those other things become, in a sense, minor inconveniences. That's not about then what we will start and stop on and hold our attention and focus on are the bumps along the road those inconveniences. We keep our eye on the vision of where we're going and the greater good and the greater glory of it all. Mary would have kept her mind on that promise that the angels spoke to her and kept hold of that. That's how she was able to remain in that place of being blessed. I think the Apostle Paul knew that lesson well. In the New Testament where we read of his letters, and the difficulties that he was in the midst of, too, as a disciple of Jesus. He was in a prison time, but yet he wrote that letter of Philippians. How is one filled with such blessedness and joyfulness in the time of strife and difficulty? When, it, when, and when in our world, we want that highway to be straight and easy and to get from here to there quickly and nicely. Because when God blesses us, isn't that what's supposed to happen? There's something deeper here in being blessed than simply the circumstance and the situation and the condition that we find ourselves in, something much deeper. And so Paul held himself in that place too when he was in prison. And we read in Philippians in the, in the fourth chapter about this wonderful way that Paul gives this lesson to us. And there's just a few points to it about how to get to that place of peace. You want to find that place of peace in your own life and we do in our whole world, here's the path and the journey, kind of like from Nazareth then to Bethlehem. Here's the first point that Paul was making, anxious in nothing in that fourth chapter, he says. Be anxious in nothing. Well, how can you ever do that? Their life in the world is filled with anxieties and questions and fears that we have. All we have to do right now is stop for just a moment and name some of them. Would you name them with me? What are any of the anxieties that you might or that the world deals with right now? I want to hear them. Money. Job security. Health. War. Christmas? Yes. All the plans, all the to-dos, the things to make happen. Absolutely. It's a curious thing that Christmas can become an anxiety uh, only in this world is that so, huh? In the conditions of our world and life. What are the other anxieties that might raise up about in our future and our family? The future for our children, relationships that we're in, in our homes, about how to be healthy and well, and concerns for one another. Our prayer concerns lifted up so many of the anxieties that we'll have, the concerns that we have in our life. And Paul says, anxious in nothing... Well, we move into that place and get to that place of anxious and nothing. When we enter into a time of trust, trusting all of those things into the hand of God, 
trusting God with our future, trusting God with the unknowns, trusting God with, I'm not sure, Joseph, how we ever can get from Nazareth to Bethlehem, and yet we trust because God called us down the road. Mary in a place of trust? Certainly. She was trusting in Joseph, her husband. She was trusting in perhaps the others who were with her on the journey. It does not speak of this in the scripture there, but you can only imagine that they wouldn't have just been together, but no doubt with a caravan with others from Nazareth who were going to Bethlehem for that same census that they needed to take. So they would get together with others in their community when you know you're not alone. There can come that peace, anxious and nothing, because I've got my husband, my wife with me. Anxious and nothing because I have the community with me. Anxious and nothing because Emmanuel, God is with me. Paul goes on. From anxious to no, in nothing and to the next place, prayerful in everything. One kind of actually flows from one into the other. When we're anxious, what better thing to do but to pray. Pray over all of it. Pray when the blessings are there and the angels sing glory to God. Pray, thank you, God. Pray, thank you, God, for, for the vision and the hope and, and, the, and the dream that you... Thank you, God, for all that you're providing us with and, O oh Lord God... Here are my fears and my anxieties. Here are my concerns that I have, and we lift them to God. We share them with God. We let God know what's happening in our life and in our world, and that is when we begin to experience all the more Emmanuel, God with us, as we just speak with God. Share with God the journey that you're on, the struggle that you're in the midst of. Share it with God, and as you do, Emmanuel, and there's peace, and there's a confidence knowing that God indeed is with. The gift of prayer, Paul says, anxious in nothing, prayerful in everything, and indeed thankful. <laughs> it's thankful always and thankful in anything. Find that place of thankfulness in all circumstance, in all situation. Praise God for the gifts of the day and providing for. Thank God for all that you're in the midst of, even the challenges, because in those challenges, faith is formed, it is forged. In the challenges that we have that are before us, knowing God is with us, we become then a people of faith, and we become then all just knowing the gifts and the skills that we draw upon them, and thankful in anything, looking for that which God is calling us to that star of Bethlehem. And when you have the goal, the, the vision, what the angels speak of there in your mind's eye and you can see it, we become thankful then. The complaining turns into thanksgivings. When you lift yourself out of the minor inconveniences and the trouble of the moment and the obstacles in the way and you can see, but this is where God is calling me to go. This is where I need to go. And you have that vision there of where God is carrying you, to Bethlehem. Thankfulness comes forth then, and that is then when this gift of peace comes. Then there is peace. We come through anxieties. We, we lift them all up to the Lord in prayer, and a thankfulness is there, and then we know peace. Troubled in the soul, anxious in the spirit, want to know peace, go the journey that Paul takes us. And it is that journey from Nazareth to Bethlehem. 